We're going to be looking at the RSI CIG stretch goals. We're going to take a look at these one by one and see which ones have been fulfilled and which ones are still outliers in the work. So let's get started. You can see that this campaign goes back to just before Christmas of 2012 when Star Citizen moved from Kickstarter onto its own, its own platform. Uh, and these are the goals um, that they started with. They're like, hey, if we can get to 2,500, so how it works is if they meet or exceed this number, which in this case for this first one is $2,500,000, they will add this feature or these features here. So we'll go down the list. Star Citizen will feature an additional flyable ship, the Anvil Gladiator. Well, that's been accomplished 100%. That Anvil Gladiator's in the game. I don't know who flies it. Um, on occasion, you'll see some streamers, some YouTubers take it out um, and talk about some strengths, but it's relatively rare. Uh, at the $2 million mark, I don't know why this has gone backwards but I guess this is the way it came at the $2 million mark. Okay. So the campaign started at Christmas, but this happened before then. I don't know. We're just going to go through them at the $2 million mark, regular community updates. You can't say that we don't get those. That's a double negative. You must say that we do get those. Citizens with appropriate packages will get to play in the multiplayer dogfighting module. And I guess that's multiplayer arena commander. So I think anyone who has a star citizen package can do that. And then it says citizens with appropriate packages will receive access to the 30 mission squadron 42 campaign upon release. That's uh, interesting, right? <clears throat> it's important to pay attention to that. You know, we hear language around episode one of Star of Squadron 42, but whatever we get initially ought to be comprised of at least 30 discrete missions. Right? That is a stretch goal for this amount of funding that was reached by the community. At 3250000 Star Citizen will feature an additional flyable ship, the Misk Starfarer. Well, this is timely, right? I have a Starfarer. We're about to see 317 drop into the PTU, and um, the Starfarer's refueling functionality will manifest. At 3500000 cockpit decorations. Turn your stock cockpit into your home with personalized decorations. Amaze your friends with bobbleheads, photographs, dinosaurs, fuzzy dice, nose art, posters, and many more cool options, as well as shipboarding. Learn more about how Star Citizen will allow players to conduct boarding operations. So one of these is very specific, right? Uh, cockpit decorations. You have a good amount of this in Elite Dangerous, for example. It's really cockpit counter uh, decorations. It's not really the cockpit all around you, but really that area in front of you in Elite Dangerous that you can um, that you can decorate. Uh, but they have some of this in, in Elite Dangerous. Um, in Star Citizen, you know, you can imagine that being a 360 operation with dedicated areas for posters and fuzzy dice, etc. None of that is in game as of yet uh, in terms of items that we can place around our cockpit. 
um, ship boarding, learn more about how Star Citizen will allow players to conduct boarding operations. You know, this is interesting generalized language in that we can conduct boarding operations right now, right, uh, in a variety of ways. Um, but this sounds like there would be more of a process, more of a playthrough model for that endeavor. And I'm interested in coming back to that. At 3,750,000, Star Citizen will feature an additional flyable ship, the Aegis Dynamics Retaliator. We have the Retaliator Base and the Retaliator Bomber, so that's in-game. Uh, at 3 million, increased community updates at the RSI website. We have a lot of ours. We have a lot of community updates. But Squadron 42, note this, goes to 35 missions. 35 missions. And citizens with appropriate packages will receive access to the Star Citizen universe with 40, count them, 40 star systems at the $3 million level for persistent online play upon release. These numbers, if I recall correctly, as we go through this, the mission count for Squadron 42 and the star system count will continue to go up at various levels, right? At 4 million, what specifically will we be seeing in the game? A new star system added to the game for every $100,000 pledge with descriptions posted in the com link. This is where folks got their first understanding of what these systems were ostensibly supposed to be. Right? So the Odin system, which we know is shot through the Squadron 42 vertical slice and is a meaningful part of Star Citizen. The Tyrol or T-Roll system, Kellogg, Goss, Orion, Ellis, Cathcart, Tal, Geddon, and Kronos systems, all at the $4 million mark, right? Now, you could imagine, let's be very frank. You could imagine a persistent universe minimum viable product with these systems and the ones we have and are anticipated to have, which is Stanton, Pyro, and Nyx. Being something that they could call, let's let's get it out there. Let's start selling it. And, you know, with the concomitant game play loops and let's uh, move forward. Right. Um, and add systems as we go to get to whatever the ultimate number is going to be. Right. Um, if you've. Listen to Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy. Listen or watch Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy. And if you haven't, I highly recommend that YouTube series. You can gain a meaningful understanding not only of what you might be able to anticipate in terms of these star citizen systems, but also the history behind them. Uh, and really be imbued with a sense of your place and space in this time and what's come before and the things you might be able to impact. Um, I think almost all of these systems have a lore makers episode dedicated to them. The RSI website will feature a monthly wingman's hangar webcast from the development team. I think that's gone away. Um, it'd be interesting to just hunt down on spectrum, whether devs have answered what is the replacement for that given the dollar commitment. Um, professional mod tools will be provided free to all players. Well, they just toss that out there, but that's a big deal. Right. And that's an important question to bring to ultimate resolution. Will we be able to mod, uh, various things in the game and what will we, will we be able to mod and what won't we be able to mod squadron 42 at 45 total missions at the $4 million mark. And we're now at 50 star systems with the Drake Cutlass. We all love the Drake Cutlass. We got the Cutlass Black in game. We have the Cutlass Blue in game. We have the Cutlass Red. And we have the Cutlass Steel. 4,500,000. Now we're at 60 star systems. We have an additional playable ship class, the Cruiser. What What is defined as a Cruiser? It's an interesting question. What? What is a cruiser? 
have to come back to that. What's a cruiser level ship? I have no idea. All the Kickstarter goals unlocked. So whatever was on Kickstarter is fully unlocked at 4,500 here. Just taking that off the board, right? In terms of the integration of the Kickstarter goals and the goals here on their own website. They were like, listen, whatever we said over there is done here at 4,500. It's taken care of. All backers before October 29th, 2012 will start Star Citizen with a Class 1 repair bot in their garage. I think this is when they had a vision that you would see repair happening to your ship. And those of us who um, go back to the, what was it, Kovalex gas station and their first cut at that, we'll recall some of that experience, uh, what I think they were trying to get at with this class one repair bot. You'll start with Star Citizen with 500 additional credits. This is that idea of packages get you additional start credits. Um, a extended hardcore flight sim controller support. Interesting. I think that's going to be for everybody. Four additional players, sh playable ship classes, the Idris class Corvette, the Origin M50, the Drake Interplanetary Caterpillar, and Destroyers. I guess like the um, Perseus, maybe. Um, I have each one of these ships and a Polaris. I think the Perseus might be the destroyer class ship. Star Citizen will feature two additional base types, Van Duel trading posts. That's scary as hell. <laughs> and hidden smuggler asteroids. That'll be interesting. That'll be very interesting. And I think the most interesting thing here under those Kickstarter goals that get unlocked is the Star Citizen additional alien race, the Kurthak. I am very interested in that. Um, let me know in the comments uh, what, what you all think of that. Um, and maybe I'll do a video on what we know about the Kurthak. At 5 million, enhanced boarding options, melee combat we have, heavy weapons, whatever that means. We, I think we have some of those. Zero gravity simulation, we have that. Suit, HUD options, and EVA combat. Uh, these need to be fleshed out, obviously, but we have what they tend to call tier zero versions of that. Increased ship customization. Um, we have a lot of ship module swapping. Um, but I wouldn't describe what we have as robust ship customization. Um, we have classes of modules, and within those classes are grades of those modules. Um, they're classed on size, and we're relatively limited to the grading within those sizes. But we can't, for example, decide that instead of two uh, size two coolers, we want to have one size three, right? For example, um, or, you know, to last week's inside star citizen, we want to paint, uh, you know, graffiti on our ships or whatever. We can't do that yet. Tablet companion application to check on your inventory commission or find missions in the galactic and get the galactic news feed. I think a lot of this is Moby glass, right? The RSI webcast will feature a monthly town hall Q&A with Chris Roberts. Hey, hey, CIG, bring that back. Bring that back. I don't care if it's quarterly. All right, bring, bring it back. Squadron 42 will feature celebrity voice acting, including at least one favorite from Wing Commander and 50 total missions. Uh, and now Star Citizen at the $5 million mark is launching with 70 star systems. You know, there's that. That stuff has to be reconciled, right? Because as I said earlier, if we were to launch with these systems as a minimum viable product, I think that's that's getting it out the door. Let, let's go. Let's get the features done. Let's Let's move. If we have to wait for 70 star systems, you know, I'm 51. I, I might be dead by then. Who knows? <laughs> Star Citizen, Star Citizen will feature an additional base type. Can you discover the alien derelict? Well, they've leaned into derelicts. 
uh, in a meaningful way, both in terms of where we can go, but also in terms of the concepting. Uh, they're really thinking about what these can look like. And hopefully that's being integrated in their overall planetary work for the different types of planetaries and the different types of systems we can get. Professional motion capture for the Squadron 42 cutscenes. We're definitely getting that. And oh, back, back up here, we've got celebrity voice acting up the wazoo. If you look at the celebrity, the cast for uh, Squadron 42. Professional motion capture for the Squadron 42 cutscenes. Yeah, I think they're, do, they're doing that. An exclusive record breaker ship skin. I wonder if anybody knows anything about that. Um, and 1,000 additional credits on launch. Uh, and the Bengal Carrier as a playable ship class. That's the big boy. At $6 million, of course, all of these goals were reached, right? And this is the date. I think this is the date that they were reached. Uh, Star Citizen launching with 100 star systems. And we got to be careful. You know, we got to be smart as a community about whether we want to say we're going to be in beta till we have 185 or whatever the number is, star systems. Um, and maybe that's the way we want to go, but I, I'm not sure about that. The Bengal carrier will be unlocked for PU play. Hopefully far, far away from where anywhere I am. Star Citizen Squadron 42 will feature a full orchestral score. Well, Pedro's doing that work. Um, you know, I've been able to unlock multiple orchestral score tracks as I moved up to Praetorian level. And I have to tell you that, you know, that, that, that is cinema, AAA cinema quality work, if not better. Bottom line. That's, that's been outstanding so far. The first Squadron 42 mission disc behind enemy lines will be available for free to all backers who pledge before $6 million upon release. Now, this is interesting because, you know, what you could argue is to say, you know, at this coming Citizen Con, give us a prologue to start Squadron 42, call behind enemy lines. That satiates folks until Squadron 42 comes out. I mean, that would be outstanding to get something uh, for those that have bought Squadron 42 who have that package at Citizen Con to announce a release date for Squadron 42 and to give folks a little mini mission, a little prologue and call it behind enemy lines. Like people pledged for that. You know, people saw that this was a goal and decided to give CIG money on the basis of this. So this is something that, that ought to come. Uh, a lot of people might have forgotten, but we haven't forgotten. So we go from 6 million to 9 million, right? We're starting to make, we made a big jump here. Three million, and then for this you you get a you get a you get a spacesuit, nice. At ten million, CIG their own mocap studio to deliver this. I'm not sure if they've done that, but they certainly executed, um, and continue to execute quality mocap work for Squadron Forty Two, and a bit for the PU. At eleven million dollars, move wingmen out of the basement. Move CIG host into a larger facility that would export support expanded development. We've got multiple facilities around the world at this point. The sun never sets <laughs> on Star Citizen. Uh, it does. You know, we are in L.A., Austin, uh, I think a couple locations in the U.K., Frankfurt. Um, so things are moving along. And they say more room for employees means more man hours spent developing the game. Who, who knows? Right. I think COVID-19 and the global crisis, racial reckoning, pandemic have subverted a lot of the sensibility related to the formula of um, developmental space and development man hours. $12 million focus on sound studios, sound production to a home office, the hangar module field feature, feature Oculus Rift support. For those that recall, I think early on we had some Rift support, some early VR support that's gone away. But CIG has repeatedly made the commitment to VR uh, for this game going forward, which I find 
tremendously exciting. You know, I'm a, uh, an original premium beta lifetime expansion pass backer of Elite Dangerous and their relative abdication in their newest update, Odyssey of VR, uh, was disappointing. So I hope that CIG continues and brings to fruition their commitment to virtual reality. An additional Starship class, the frigate at 13 million. A command and control center supervise the battle from the deck of your Idris or destroyer class with advanced C and C packages that allow you to tie all of your ships together and assume central command from the third seat. I want this. I think it's going to be important when you get on those bigger ships to be able to be uh, the driver of strategy and positioning. Like the game ought to shift to command and control with those bigger ships. 14 million hibernation mode. Save and resume while you're out in space. That's getting in bed when it works right. Hit the bunk and exit the game. Professional quality feature length behind the scenes of Star Citizen documentary film. I think that is being filmed. Uh, and Star Citizen will feature a fourth land out option on Earth. Where will it be? London, Berlin. Right now we have New York, Shanghai, and Moscow. But this pledge amount commits, in my view, CIG to a fourth land out option. And my hope is that it would not be London or Berlin, but that it would be someplace ostensibly third world, right? Someplace like Dar es Salaam or Johannesburg or, um, you know, Tripoli, um, you know, something very different than, um, you know, the typical New York, Shanghai, Moscow. That feels typical. Do something different. At 15 million, we get an additional ship class, the Escort Carrier. And every backer will get a free 42-page upgrade handbook manual with their game that goes through the process of customizing and overclocking ship systems. Interesting. 16 million. Arena mode. The train sim. Arena commander, right? Arena commander. And if you back before 16 million, you get a laser pistol. At 17 million, every pledger who backs will receive a ship upgrade package containing an engine modifier. An engine modifier. You know, like, um, you know, that stuff you would you, use, that higher octane, small can of higher octane juice you could put in your gas tank or something like that. I don't know. Uh, Star Citizen will feature an additional flyable ship class, the Battle Cruiser. Mm. I wonder what that is. At 18 million, an exclusive star system for pre launch backers. Only players who support the game before its launch will receive the computer coordinates needed to allow their jump drives to access this system. This is interesting, right? This is almost like Shinrata Desra requires elite rank in Elite Dangerous in order to access the system, right? I can imagine CIG having a number of permit-blocked systems that require certain gates to get through. Um, my hope is that most of that will be gameplay, but this one is a commitment at $18 million for a system for all of us pre-launch that we can go to uh, and avoid the noobs who come along after launch. Know Your Foe at $19 million. Jane's fighting ship style manual free in PDF form. You know, you can imagine that the organization that does Jump Point every month could very easily do that. Manage space stations. This is big. Players will compete to own and operate a limited number of space stations across the galaxy. Really? So there'd be a certain maybe space station merchant class and or a certain merchant class that 
these space stations are landlords of and you compete to own and operate and I guess get the revenue from those stations. Interesting. I want to see how that's going to play out. RSI Museum will air monthly with a new game featured each time. I don't even know what that is. Definitely going to come back to that with some questions for uh, Big Jarrett. First person combat at 20 million on select lawless planets. Don't just battle in space stations and platforms. Take the fight to the ground. Well, we're doing that over at Grim Hex and other places already, right? Um, the salvage mechanic at 21, 21 million. Salvage isn't an aside. It's a career with its own mechanics, story tie-ins, and universe-shaping end games. Well, shit. Search the galaxy for a host of valuable and interesting secrets using both the flight and FPS components. Discover the secrets of the ancient Hadesians. Locate valuable components in cargo or go down in history as the first to make contact with an entirely new alien race. That's gangster. This might be my favorite. Right? It's saying an awful lot. Right? Like, I think the last part of that, making contact with an entirely new alien race, has very little to do with the first part of that which is salvage, right? I think salvage is coming, but I like all of this. We know about Hadesian artifacts. If you haven't seen the pyro demo, if you don't have the Hadesian artifact in your um, commodities, that's uh, an incredible story that I'd love to see dived into. Um, And, once Star Citizen hits and the PU is released and we start getting this type of content, that's going to be a great experience to be around for the emergence of an entirely new alien race because you got to think that those that race needs to be, from CIG's perspective, materially different than the races that we have and different from the Kurthak who were already mentioned. So that's going to be very interesting. I'd like them to be radically different. Right, like bacteria, conscious civilizations at the bacteria level, or something. I don't know, something crazy. Twenty-two million facial capture system. We've researched a technology that uses a series of cameras to capture real heads and import them into the game. You know, this is um, that's interesting. Infinite Reality is a place that has that technology. In any case, I like the DNA mix. We just need probably. 1,700% more head options to make that robust. 23 million, the Xi'an Scout unlocked. Is that the uh, Cartual? Yeah, the Cartual. Cartu is the light attack craft of the Xi'an military. You know, um, I'm excited about that. We have that. I have that. I'm probably going to upgrade that to the Santaki I when it comes out, but I have one of those. Public transportation system. You know, we have those on planets, but they're talking about the Starliner galactic transportation system. Jump on a ship, pay and go. At 25 million and enhanced alpha. What does this mean? We will use additional funding to build a wider alpha test than we originally attended for the first phase of Star Citizen's launch. Well, (laughs) we're in that right now, buddy. The initial plan was to first launch servers in North America and then expand to areas such as Europe and Australia to decrease latency in those areas, perfecting the game as we improve the experience around the world. They've done that. This funding will allow us to invest in a wider infrastructure for our early testing and spinning up rem- and sp- uh, for our early testing, spinning up remote servers earlier. Hitting this goal will allow us to also, will also allow us to increase the number of remaining alpha slots. Um, they've got plenty of alpha slots. They just need to server meshing so we can bring ourselves together. Twenty six million enhanced capital ship systems. In addition to CNC, man, the CNC is a big deal. Damage control teams now to fight fires, repair key systems during battle. I want to be able to do that on most ships, not just capital ships. I'd love to have an NPC dedicated to engineering slash damage control. 
um, maybe a couple of folks, depending on the size of the ship. Control internal bulkhead, bulkheads to slow borders. I don't know what that means. A bulkhead is like a wall, right? So control them. What does that mean? Man a number of consoles like navigation and engineering that will make commanding a capital ship feel even more immersive. We need that for a multiple of ships, not just at the capital level. At $27 million, the Banu Merchantman unlocked. Good. And I'm glad it's getting bigger. Um, I have that ship, and I'm going to enjoy that. Banu technology. At $28 million, a new starter ship. Consolidated Outland. Mustang. We have that. $29 million, enhanced mission design for Squadron 42. Uh, okay, well, we'll see. Right. $30 million, the Origin 890 jump. We have that in game. At $31 million, the RSI Orion. We do not have that in the game. Um, I'm ready for that. I have that ship as well. At $32 million, the Aegis Surveyor. An industrial quality salvage ship. Maybe that will drop once Sir, salvage drops. Tractor beams, floodlights, scanner options, and docking ports round out the tool chest in this capable utilitarian spacecraft. Equipped with a reinforced cargo bay, a long-range jump drive, and launch pods for unmanned drones. That sounds like a big dog. The Anvil Carrick at $33 million, we have that. The Misk Hull C Discreet, I don't know what Discreet means. Um, I know what it means, but I don't know what it means here. At thirty-four million, um, we are getting that the Misk series, the Hull series, fairly shortly. The Drake Herald we have in the game, but it, data as a gameplay loop, data running, data securing, data heisting. Uh, we don't have that in the game yet. So the Drake Herald, the Mercury Star Runner, um, those ships can't really do data protection. They can't really do what they are built to do, but the Drake Herald is in the game. At $36 million, the TAMSA system. Located near the fringe of Banu space, TAMSA system features a massive central star that has collapsed into a black hole. So it's a system where the star and evidence suggests two other planets were engulfed by a black hole. Two planets remain in the system. A Chthonian world and a gas giant located far from the black hole's events horizon. And that those two outer planets are slowly being pulled towards the black hole. I'd love to see that happen across the first couple of years of the PU and create gameplay and missions around it and then allow us to witness it. At 37 million, the Tanga system. Inner planets engulfed by the star that entered the red giant phase. Life began to emerge when the star collapsed into a white drawer, throwing the planet black into a deep freeze, then blasting the atmosphere away. That's how the system was found. Only two worlds, but both are dead planets with no atmosphere. Kano system at 38 million. The UDS 2943 01 22 system at 39 million. Here we're getting a lot of systems. Cabal, Oritani. Um, you know, these are commitments. People funded you for these things, right? So we're excited to see them all. Uh, and hopefully they stay fully aligned as much as they possibly can with the original lore basis that excited people to give money in the first place. Procedural generation R and D team at 41 million. So back in 2014, May, March of 2014, we began this process. Or well, we got the funding to begin the process of developing a procedural generation technology for future iterations of star citizen. It's an interesting question to know where we are on that. Um, how that um, we, t we understand that there are components that are integrated with placed art and intentional design 
Um, but we're going to need to be frank. We're going to need a lot more procedural generation and cutting edge procedural generation. It doesn't feel as much like procedural generation as previous games and, and PD experiences have been. Um, we're going to need a, a lot more of that to get to the numbers of systems that we're talking about. 42 million, an updated observist guide. Holographic ships, items and navigation. We have some of that. A lot of that is wrong, but we do have it. Explorer class Moby Glass rig. Uh, everybody has Moby Glass. The Gladius, Squadron 42. It's in Squadron 42 and it's in the PU. And a towel. Lots of fun. The Orc MK9 armor. That's in the game, I think. Or some versions of them. Oh, I think the MK4 is in the game. I remember correctly. I don't know if the MK9 is in the game yet. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Stellar cartography. We have the 3D holographic representations in the mat rooms, but we do not have a functional stellar cartography. Uh, uh, We don't have that feature set in the game, and we don't have a game loop for that yet. At 45 million, the Hadesian artifact. We have that, but we don't know anything about it. Can't do anything with it. Uh, 46 million updated scanning software. Uh, tap, hit tab, and you scan. Hit V, and you can do some additional scanning. We have some of that. Um, we don't have a library of searchable frequencies. Variables, we have variable scan size. Um, maybe that is the moving Changing the scan size maybe is moving across the searchable frequencies. Um, engine tuning kit, don't really have that at 47 million. 48 million, Retaliator commercial. I can't remember whether there's a Retaliator commercial or not. There probably is. There's a lot of commercials. The Xi'an space plant, the Centennial Bloom. You know, some of these I'm going to have to dive in and see if we actually have those. Um I don't. I know that we're not really selling the plant in sealed terrariums, right? And we don't talk about waiting for them to balloon and being fascinated by them. Alien languages. There was a lot of work on this earlier on. Uh, they brought somebody on to do a lexicon, I think, of the Xi'an language. Um, we haven't really heard a lot about the Vandu language or the Banu language, if I recall correctly. Um. No universal translators, no garbled animal noises. Star citizens, aliens will be speaking their own authentic languages. So are we going to have to like learn it by like no man's sky? Um, that's going to be interesting. I wonder what the gameplay commitment to this is. Um, because you can imagine, for example, aliens who speak common or speak UEE or speak English or speak our languages, but with an alien accent. And then you can imagine aliens who don't speak our languages at all. And maybe you have to learn, literally have to learn some Banu or some Xi'an or some Kurthak or some Tavarin uh, to speak to those um to speak to those aliens. The uh, depth here, though, is what we're shooting for in a game like this. Web-based known universe map, the star map. We need a revision of that, and we're getting one, is my understanding. BB-12, hmm, BB-8, BB-12, is a brand new manned maneuvering unit. Whether you are engaging precision mining operations or delicate salvage retrieval. The BB-12 is capable of EV operation for six uninterrupted hours. EVA tech. I think this will evolve into something else. That's my guess. At 53 million, the Independent Arbitrators Guild. So this was fully funded in 2014. And people were looking to get the... Ability to file complaints against or within private organizations, maybe that you've joined or worked for. 
Petition cases with our AIG representatives to have your voice heard and restitutions made. Hmm. Interesting. Arbitration. I'd love to see that between, for example, and maybe CIG has talked about this, between player groups. You know, where you go in and you submit certain evidence and then it comes down to a certain RNG Jesus role for how much who for how much which party gets of what. That'd be interesting. At fifty four million more detailed AI more detailed AI activities. Bartender, doctor, entertainer, nurse, sanitation worker, security guard, shopper, tourist, vagrant, and vandal. And barista. Right? Coffee person. But I think coffee person is a variant on bartender, right? Future AI roles will be added with future stretch goals. Well, we'll see about that. We're going to go through them here. Each additional class of character will be fully expressive and have a role to play in Star Citizen's planet side interaction and the game's greater economy. So when people ask, well, what other NPC types are we getting? This should be the template for that conversation, right? Because it should be these, and if it's not these, we should know why. Right? We should know why. At 55 million, Ballistic Gatling Gun, The Preacher, Armament Inquisition 22. Um, I don't recall that, but maybe we have it. At 56 million, the J-Span Cryostar, liquid cooling. Um, I know we have coolers in our ships. Misk Endeavor, which we haven't gotten yet, but everybody's excited about. At 57 million. 58 million, everybody's getting 10,000 UEC. At 59 million, the Anvil Aerospace Crucible. We know that the Crucible is a ship that we're anticipating getting. We haven't gotten yet. 60 million, the Aegis Vanguard class fighter and fighters. We've got four variants of those. The Aspiria. Aspiria. This says Aspira. I think they changed the name. The Aspiria Prowler. Or have I pronounced that wrong the whole time? The Prowler. Dropship. It's badass. I love it. They nerfed it like they do many ships when they first drop, then they nerf. At 62 million, the Genesis class Starliner. I own this as well. Looking forward to role playing transport um, like Dark Knight from Soul Citizens. I don't think I want to be as deep into it as he wants to be, but I certainly want to do that as well. The Misk Reliant. Right, we've got variants of the Reliant that focus in on a variety of things. At sixty-four million dollars, pets. Everybody's going to want a pet. I'm looking forward to a pet as well. At sixty-five million, enhanced ship modularity. Well, that's the last one. Um, let's go into this. So you have the ship of your dreams, but really wish it could be customized to suit your needs a bit more than the off-the-shelf models. Yes, I do. I want to do that with my uh, Cutlass Black. I want to do that with my uh, RSI Constellation and Drawn. I want to do that with my Mercury Star Runner. I want to do that with my Ares Ion. This new goal, a massive undertaking, is going to be of interest. We are looking to overhaul any suitable ships, including the Cutlass, Avenger, Retaliator, and Redeemer. Hmm to allow many modular components to be available as swap outs. For example, if you have purchased a Redeemer, then using a new system, you would have a variety of new modules available to fit, refit the ship, internal and external, to suit your play requirements. If you wanted to make it a bounty hunter ship, you could buy a stasis chamber module for the lower deck, and you would be able to capture and store fugitives to be delivered for their bounties at your leisure. You could configure the upper deck to be outfitted with a long-range communication suite, allowing you to keep in touch with your Info agent, even when in deep space. Fed up of bounty hunting, swap in a larger cargo module on the lower deck. I think there should be some of this, 
but it's interesting and I'm not necessarily against it that they're limiting it to certain mod certain ships because you want some dynamic of a ship is for a thing. And then you want some classes of ships to be, well, part of their thing is to be able to do a lot of different things. Jacks of all trades, masters of none type of ships. Um, this is interesting. So you can see that, one, the stretch goals for me are a hard, you know, dollar committed blueprint for where the game's development ought to be going and, and a form of a Bible for game development for CIG. Again, we should be seeing these things. Um, and if we're not seeing them, we should have clear answers as to why. But it also provides a level of excitement about where things can go in the, in the persistent universe in particular um, with the commitments that many of us made in the pledging that we did uh, to get to this point. So good stuff. Let's talk about it in the comments. I look forward to hearing your thoughts and engaging deeply on this. Um, and maybe it begins to better shape the types of questions we ask and the type of discourse we have with CIG, not just from a gotcha, you know, let's continue to hold you accountable standpoint, although there needs to be some accountability in the discourse, but more along the lines of, Hey, we talked about this at the, um, you know, at, at, at the, um, certain level, right? We talked about the arbitrators guild at 53 million. Have you guys come back around to that? How would that play out? Would it be, you know, how, how would that work? We're interested in that. Where does that fit in your current vision of gameplay? Right? Like we, we ought to be using this document a lot more often, I think. All right, let me know what you think. Um, let me know if you wanted me to do that video on the Kurthok, Um and explore what we know about them as well. All right, peace. Hey,